If we're attracted to you, we absolutely want to sleep with you. And we will always say the right thing. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the official data collection video. We have been talking about data collection on my channel over the past year. If you haven't watched the data collection video, go watch that. Data collection is basically where you go on as many dates as possible, not so much for the purpose of finding a partner, although if that comes out of it, well, congratulations. It's more so to figure out what you truly want, more about yourself. So a couple of years ago, I met my friends who are married. They told me before they met each other, they would go on as many dates as possible with people. And this is where the term collecting data came in. They said, were collecting data because they were trying to figure out what they liked and what they didn't. See, if you only have a very small sample size, even 10 people, it's not enough. You've been on dates with 10 people. It's still not enough for you to determine what kind of person is best for you. Also, personally, back in the day, I used to have a very rigid list of qualities I wanted in a person. And then as I started to date or meet new people, Suddenly those qualities changed and I realized, oh, hey, I actually don't care about this certain, certain thing that I thought I really, really cared about. And you don't know these things until you collect data, until you get those experiences. So Simone sits in rarefied air within the global dating market. And I say global dating market because it is truly globalized and rarefied air because she is traditionally very attractive to a wide array of men. From different countries right she's very intelligent which is a very attractive trait for a lot of uh, successful men a lot of successful men are maybe smarter they have higher intelligence usually quite driven and so they do like a partner who is also able to keep up with them intellectually so that's that's definitely a trait they're like intellectually like intelligent and well developed from a career perspective and fame this is where it's quite interesting because of simone's presence on youtube as well as following on instagram this tends to attract a very interesting mix of men whether it's the sons of billionaires famous athletes um, you know, tech entrepreneurs, a whole range for most women, maybe high value men. So from an attraction perspective, that's very positive. I think one of the challenges is when you're very intelligent and you're also quite career wise successful, narrows the dating pool. You know, a lot of these men, they need to be either more successful financially career wise, uh, which is difficult because someone's doing very well, um, or they need to have a very well developed ego, rightfully so based on her position within the dating world. She can be extremely picky and have extremely high standards. And I think in general, high standards are a good thing and everyone should have high standards. Now, what's very important is, of course, developing yourself sufficiently so that those standards that you set for others around you are a reflection of who you are, right? And so that's something that Simone's done very well for a long time, developed herself intellectually, career-wise, and as a personality. Being flown out is not a flex. I've been seeing a lot of videos online where guys will say to a girl, have you like even been flown out? It's like a way to bring her down as if being flown out is that special. It's not, let me tell you why. First of all, if you're getting flown out, more often than not, there is an expectation on the table you're gonna sleep with that person. Hey babe, do you wanna come to the Maldives with me? Yeah, you're gonna be I was talking to this guy, I know about this literally yesterday actually, this guy is like a huge tech founder and he said to me, you know, if I were a girl, I would never fly out to a guy and as a guy, any girl flying to me or accepting my invitation, I just think they want my in their mouth. I have never once accepted a fly out offer. Oh, you know what I should put in the statistics? Four men flew out to take me on a date. If you want to take me out, you come to my city and you take me out. That's exactly what those four guys did. Flying out a girl is a flex for the man because it shows, hey, I can afford it. I'm literally flying a girl to me. And guess what? She's gonna be dick the whole weekend. Secondly, a lot of girls will accept this offer because to them, performing these sexual favors is very low risk to them compared to the holiday they're getting. Maybe to them, the holiday to the Maldives and the photos they'll get for Instagram is worth these little sexual favors and the time they'll spend with this man. For me, it's not worth it. I can afford the holiday for myself. <sighs> and it's actually not that special. Like, even brokies be flying out now. You know why? Guys would do anything for sex. If we're attracted to you, we absolutely want to sleep with you. And we will always say the right thing. Number two, data collection is also about discovering yourself, right? I used to think I really like simps. I love Sims. I want a guy. To, I want a guy to be on his hands and knees for me. And actually, in my data collection process this year, I encountered many Sims. I just realized over time I couldn't respect them, and a lot of my male friends they would say to me like Simone, 
you don't want a simp, you don't want a simp. And I'd be like, yes, I do. Women, we can't actually respect a simp. There is a line where it's too much. And I remember there was this guy, also like ultra successful, founder. He's attractive, he's tall. I don't understand why he was like this, but he was such a simp that I could say, hey, like, can you lie on the ground and let, let me like run you over with my car? Cause it turns me on. And he would probably be like, yes, like anything for you. Yeah, I was never attracted to him and I never accepted his date offer. I think a good level of simpish is literally just like the basic respect, they're kind to you, they support you, they love you, but there is a line where it's too much and that's when they sacrifice their own self-respect. Then you can't respect them. Trust your instinct with a person. My instinct never fails and the more you data collect, the stronger your instinct will become. Different guys are going to bring out different energy in you and we talk about this in the Triple S dating course. It's Triple S dating month in January so get on that immediately if you want more content from me you want courses hey triple s okay some guys are gonna bring out different energy in you okay masculine feminine energy we go into this in the dating course but we have mask and femme energy in us and I think we have like a baseline level that we're born with and of course we can manipulate it but a lot of these coaches will say women you need to like be entirely in your feminine men entirely in your masculine if you want a mask partner you got to be ultra femme and that's like somewhat true but what's more important is actually finding someone that just like balances you out so naturally in my work and because I literally <laughs> I'm a trillionaire duh I have a lot of masculine energy when I'm at work and I'm largely in this state. So for me to get into my femme, that partner needs to be very like stable and masculine, but not masculine to the point where he suppresses my own mask energy because then I feel like not supported. There are some guys who they have such like weak energy compared to me that I mog their energy entirely. And I will speak like this to them. I have like quite a direct, tone right now I speak to them like I'm in a meeting and then there's other guys where my voice becomes so high it annoys me I can't even project my voice it becomes so soft and I can't even control it and sometimes I can't even project my voice and they can't hear me they're like Simone can you speak up and I'm like no I can't <laughs> By the way, you guys, if you're having a terrible time dating, you're attracting the wrong partners, maybe you need the help of a therapist. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp will connect you with a licensed therapist to help listen and give you insightful, unbiased advice for whatever you need. Starting therapy can be really difficult and the right therapist can often be hard to find, especially if you live in an area where there's not many therapists. You're kind of limited. With BetterHelp though, you have access to a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists around the world that specialize in different areas. And you can also choose whether you want a video call, phone call, or text them because sometimes face-to-face -face can be a little bit confronting. To get started, all you need to do is fill out a questionnaire, which will help assess your specific needs and what you're looking for and your goals. And in most cases, BetterHelp will then match you with the perfect therapist within 48 hours or less. Therapy is like dating, as I always say, which means there's a high chance you're not even gonna like your first or second therapist. You might have to date around to collect that therapist data. The great thing about BetterHelp is you can switch therapists completely free of charge. In real life, you gotta go to a doctor, get the new referral, that costs money, it costs time, and then you have to wait weeks and weeks for an appointment. Better help it's free to change and you can and you can book the new appointment and you can book the new appointment as soon as that therapist is available so people spend hours and hours in the gym why don't you spend hours on your mind imagine the return on investment for starting therapy so join over 4 million people today who have used better help to start living a happier and healthier life go to my link here to get 10% off your first month of therapy with better help meet immediately vibes are different in real life compared to online don't rule people out immediately just online. I mean, sometimes there are huge, unavoidable red flags. You can get a vibe, but people are so different. For example, I tend to like box people in, kind of like a man. Men have these different categories, as Alex says here. By the way, Alex will be giving his insight in the data collection video in Triple S. I would say the biggest one is that we generally put women into two categories of like dateable or fuckable or don't exist. <laughs> so. Like that's a that's a pretty universal one I would say if we're attracted to you We absolutely want to sleep with you and we will always say the right thing Like we'll say all of the right things like if you say hey, like I really want to get physical Of course, of course. We'll say yeah, no, of course I wasn't even thinking that but we're lying 100% of the time especially in early dating We always if we're attracted we always want to smash and um, you know, we'll, we'll play the long game I think men are really good at playing the long game uh, but 
you know, that's basically a lie and just understand that like if he's attracted and you want him to be attracted to you, then he's trying to sleep with you and like it's your job to kind of set the pace in a way. But if he's a good man, then he will understand that it is your job to set the pace and he'll also understand the triggers and the ways to, you know, build comfortability, trust and closeness and then attraction. From the male POV, we have a fairly universal rating scale, but uh, there are definitely niches and preferences. There's definitely some archetypes that men will just go crazy for, right? But in general, there's a fairly even scale and uh, there's basically a line of like, yes, we would sleep with you or no, we wouldn't. And then there's another line of, yes, we would be seen in public with you or no, we wouldn't. <laughs> so that's one. There was this guy, I boxed him in as a friend, okay? I knew him online for so long. When I met him in real life, because we happened to be in the same city, holy shit, I remember him walking up to me and I'm like, I'm so confused. You were boxed in as a friend, but now I'm really attracted to you. He had this energy that I just didn't expect and I liked him. But because I like was so rigid in how I boxed people in, it, it led to like a really bad date. So yeah, try not to have expectations. It can lead into the next point. Some of these guys or girls will become your friends. Literally three guys I met from dating apps have become some of my best friends. These guys are in relationships now and our friendship is so like pure and stable. And I think men and women who have not had healthy relationships with the opposite sex, of course they're gonna project oh, that relationship, friendship is obviously going to fail because you're going to sleep with each other one day. Just say you've never had a good, healthy friendship and leave it at that. You should seek out a feeling of stability, not butterflies when you meet this person. I think if that person, this is what I noticed, okay? There are some people I'll go on dates with and I'm so comfortable and I'm like eating because I don't like to eat in front of people if I'm nervous. And then there's other people I will not touch my food. Something in me is like, I don't want to eat in front of them. I feel unsafe. So trust your gut instincts. You actually shouldn't misplace. I feel nervous or butterflies as a good thing. You should be seeking out stability. The guy I liked the most, I felt so immediately safe and stable with him and protected. Protected is something you should aim to feel. Men are love bombers. Women are too, but men even more so, which is why you should never believe words only actions okay i'm gonna buy your chanel bag for christmas bet do it i'll believe it when i see it i'm gonna i'm gonna treat you so well i'm gonna love you so much bet do it now let's see it <laughs> also don't forget i've collected hella data on this love bombers are the first to fall out of love to leave they just jump onto the next person the next shiny object that catches their eye love bombing is so intense there was this one guy this guy like doesn't even know me he knows my instagram okay he's watched a few of my videos successful he really shouldn't be like this much of a sim it's embarrassing he will message me wow i just feel like found the one for me um he would like write poetry about me by the way we had talked on instagram for one week of that in that one week i was literally replying maybe like once a day i think dinner is the most optimal way to like have a first date i love dinners but what's a better way to actually get to know someone in my opinion is going for an activity golf bowling i think it's a very like casual way to get to know someone and like ladies if you want them to spend money <laughs> they're still spending money on the activity this is a data point that alex confirmed listen to the recording if you want more tea join triple s next month how you carry yourself and how how your standards are what you are signaling we talked about signaling in the branding course in triple s last month if you were in it but whatever you're signaling is how people are going to treat you if you act like a princess you will be treated like a princess. If you act like a party girl, crazy, no self-respect, da 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 da, you will be treated as such. Mind you, I've actually never been treated badly because you know what? I don't treat myself badly and they know that. The guys who try to humble you, they're insecure. They will go for the most obvious things. Shut up, go get a job and a girlfriend. If you're an attractive woman, they're gonna call you ugly. You know why? It's the first thing they think of. Let's take away the power from something that's granted her power, like beauty. If you're like of average attractiveness, they're not gonna say, hey, you're not even pretty. Like that person probably has been told their whole life they're average or like not really pondered too much about their beauty. But someone who's beautiful, they'll go, you're not even that pretty, you're ugly. 
likewise if you're super intelligent you're not even intelligent i actually think you're really dumb <laughs> Guys, I'm going to end the video with some data from Alex, if you want to listen to that. It's just like a long recording. Honestly, in Triple S, we're going so much more in depth, especially with my dating experiences. I don't want to give too much away in this video, simply because a lot of these people, they might watch it and they're like privacy freaks and you can figure out who they are, especially if they're like high profile. And I want to stay alive also like it's just not a vibe to have incel men on here commenting da 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 hateful stuff i don't care for it i'd rather do it in our community and additionally alex is gonna be in triple s this month and there's just a lot coming so come join triple s while you can while it's cheap while it's accessible and i look forward to having you in our community okay thank you for watching everyone and don't forget vlog channel out posting every week ich liebe dich tschüss so a big one that's valuable for men and women. Um, and I think a lot of people get caught up in, you know, overthinking and trying to justify reason and explain why someone has lost interest. Um, you know, the, the bottom line is that people have busy lives. Maybe they've met someone else. Maybe something's happened in their family. Maybe they're going through some of their own challenges. And in general, like never really blaming yourself for why someone is not interested and are certainly not attacking yourself and your character, your behavior, your traits. Um, you know, definitely don't put yourself down just because someone is interested. Uh, and this applies equally for men and women. It's just like, sometimes you just met someone else and that's fine, you know? Um, and so conversely, if a man is really into you, then he will generally break down walls and barriers location-wise, distance, uh, you know, if he's busy, he'll find time for you. But basically, he will really go out of his way to pursue you if he's into you. And I think that is generally the best basis for the start of any relationship is that both people are very much attracted to each other and actively want to pursue each other. Of course, we could get into more of the psychology and mindset of healthy relationships, which is that both people are complete within themselves and they're pursuing each other in addition to the full life that they've created for themselves. But I think back to the first point, which is that things happen in life and if someone loses interest or they just drop off, it could be for a so many multitude of reasons and it's very rarely, if ever, because of you, right? Unless of course you did something very inappropriate or you, you know, there was an actual event. But um, I think that's a really big one and quite valuable. I would also say that because of the level of responsibility and ambition that Simone has, and a lot of successful ambitious women share, it can be challenging to switch into the more feminine mode and side of oneself, because naturally pursuing career, going out there and going and getting it, like those are very masculine traits, as opposed to a more feminine passive sometimes, attraction uh, versus you know the more masculine, like going and getting it, you know? So I think that can be challenging because naturally, the types of men that are attracted and uh, qualify for some uh, for a woman that's very high value is that they're, they're generally you know successful or higher in the hierarchy or totem pole let's say and what helped them get there a lot of the time was that masculine ambition and go get it energy and so they oftentimes do want a very feminine soft and um, I don't know if passive is the right word but and nor is easy so I need to find a better word but um, you know, really being in touch and being able to switch into the more feminine side, it's very difficult when you have a lot of responsibilities, when you have a lot of weight on your shoulders, you know, just pressure. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would say that is one of the challenges um, and just something for women in general to be aware of, especially the more ambitious go-getter types, is to have some kind of ritual or process so that they can, you know, get into their feminine side more often. If he ghosts you or doesn't reply, he's not interested and you should just move on. Like, that's that. It's done. Um, that's a big one. Uh, if he transitions from, uh, you know, paying lots of attention, wanting to spend time with you, being attentive and like trying to do stuff for you. So like uh, in the early stages of dating, uh, to like a bit more like distant, cold, doesn't want to hang out and that, then like he's probably lost interest. Uh, there's no necessarily, there's not really a, uh, there's not really a solution for that. Fear, fear, Norman Rockwell. No, I can't do it. It's just me and you. I've got to see you on my list. <laughs> <laughs> you better snitch. I'm the neighborhood kiss. I'm not You're in the yard, I like the fire. And as the summer fades away, nothing I can say. You write I tour, we make it work. You're beautiful and I'm insane. We're American made. Give me Hallmark. One dream under the one lover. Make me happy and blue. Norman Rockwell. No high under, no cover, it's alright. Mm, it's just yeah. me and you. Oh, God, I'm doing my best. It's me, you're gonna snitch. I'm stupid, the neighborhood kids. Sending off, they think you're in the yard. I like the fire. That's the summer fades away. You think I'm gonna say,
American made. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Selling off my bank is hit it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Selling off my bank is kiss. Oh God, miss you on my lips. Kiss me a little bit of spit. On the stoop with the neighborhood kids. Selling off my bank is kiss. Yeah, mm, yeah.